Lord, we we bring our we bring our lives to you tonight. Those of us who are married in this room bring our marriages to you. We confess to you, Lord, that at often times we fall short. We've not done the mechanics, the works that we needed to do, the constant repairing and breaching the areas that we should have worked on all months, years ago. The maintenance part of our life has gone unattended. Often we've treated others out in the world better than we treated those in our own home. We repent of that tonight. We repent that, Lord, we have often failed you, not in what we talked about our love for you, God, but Lord, somehow our love for you has been very shallow and empty when we've not manifested that love to the one that you gave us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the love, the life, the lift that we've given each other over the years, the constant encouraging word, strengthening the bond the beautiful children that you gave us, the five grandsons that are awesome. We thank you, Lord. We are blessed of you, blessed immensely, highly favored by the presence of God. Not only, not only, Lord, in the outside arena, which we call this church our place of home and existence, but in our own home, what a blessing it is. I thank you for it, Lord. And I thank you for everyone here that's here to share together and to bear each other's love toward one another with a new dimension and a new commitment. In Christ's name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Give that little bride of yours a clasp on the hand and squeeze a little bit and say, boy, I do love you. Boy, I, I don't like the distance I've got with Charlotte tonight. I just, baby, I love you, sweetheart. You know, when, uh, when uh, Marilyn mentioned the, the, the triangle, that's often what I use in counseling. And when uh, I had a visit from Ryan, first of all, and then Carrie, and we talked back and forth about marriage and about a commitment to each other, I brought up the triangle. They'll remember that. And I said, there may be distance apart. Matter of fact, I've talked with Carrie several times. There may be distance apart. And there may be things that you can't work on to come together. And it just seems virtually impossible. Here you are. Here is your companion. And you're saying, all these different issues, there's no way that we can settle them. As Marilyn shared a moment ago, a lot of what we do here is about triangles, about three sides and what I simply tell them is that stop working on your marriage because it isn't working the way you think start working on yourself and your relationship with God all of a sudden when you start working on your relationship and you get closer to God I think there's a scripture husbands love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it all of a sudden as you work that up toward understanding that kind of relationship and love, before you know it, you find yourself closer to God. And all of a sudden, as your companion starts, wife starts working toward submitting herself to God's plan for her life, all of a sudden, you find yourself wrapped up. And can I tell you, that's where marriage has to begin. Because you can't really love the way you need to love until you fall in love with God until Christ becomes the centerpiece, not just of a home that you're trying to build, but the life that you're trying to live. It must be preeminent and first and foremost. So I'm going to ask tonight for Ryan to bring his bride to the stage and their daughter.
The vows you are about to take tonight are sacred above words. And your lives hereafter shall not be bound together by just the mere words of a man, by the, the very essence of God's thoughts about what you say. The security of your marriage is resting in the rights, of the ritual of any church, nor in the word of this minister, your security of marriage lest it rest in the true purpose of your heart. So you stand here tonight. Your hearts are open for your family, for all of your friends, for your church. And it stands in the character for which you are going to build. Character is not somebody, something that someone gives to you. It is the thing that you labor and work out on your own. It's in the steadfastness of this devotion that you're showing to each other tonight and that you will work on establishing the rest of your life. And it is in the love of God that your marriage is bound. Will you, Ryan, before I, before I do this, I want to pause a moment and say, most of us when we got married our first time, marriage we heard these words and they didn't sink very deep you two know these words I'm about to share very powerful will you Ryan have Carrie to be your wife will you love her will you honor her comfort and keep her and forsaking all others remain true to her as long as you both shall live, you may answer, I will. Will you, Carrie, have Ryan to be your husband? Will you love him, honor him, comfort and keep him, and forsaking all others remain true to him as long as you both shall live, you may answer, I will. Ryan, I'm going to ask you to take this mic. I want to ask you to hold Carrie's hand. Want me to hold the mic for you? Okay. And give her the vow that you make before this congregation tonight. I, Ryan, take you, Carrie, to be my wife, to love, to honor, and cherish until the Lord returns. My eyes will be fixed on you, my heart fixed on you, and all my love fixed on you, because my heart, my soul, my mind, and body is fixed on Christ. You are what I prayed for in college just a couple of years ago, <laughs> many years ago. And you were and are the answer to my prayers. God created you for me and me for you, and I will not take that for granted. You are my wife, my love, and my life, and with the help and grace of God, I can be the husband and father that I need to be and should be. I thank you for loving me through the rough times, the easy times. I thank you for always standing by my side and for always encouraging me. I thank you for this second chance. I love you and I always will. Carrie, if it is your desire to receive that pledge, I'd ask you to continue holding hands. And I want to ask you to repeat your commitment to Ryan. <laughs> Almost 18 years ago, I stood on another stage in front of our friends and family and entered into covenant with you. Today, I believe with all my heart that original covenant still stands, but not because of anything you or I have done or not done. It stands because God ordained our marriage, and now God is restoring it. At 21 years of age, I sincerely meant the words I spoke to you, but today, at 38 years of age, I can be even more specific in my pledge to you. 
Today, Ryan, I choose again to accept you as my covenant husband. This is more than a piece of paper to me. No judge, minister, or ceremony can establish this for us. It is written and held together by the hand of the Father, never to be revoked. You are mine to have and to hold from this day forward, and I choose to hold on to the good things from our past and allow time and the Holy Spirit to soften our mistakes and regrets until they are no longer wounds, but simply our testimony. I choose you for better or worse, and I can say that with confidence because I have seen both the best and the worst in you, and I love you more now than ever before. I will be yours for richer or poorer because I am aware this is not a romance novel or a sappy movie. This is real life, and God has provided, promised to provide all we need, and his provision manifested through you will always be enough for me. I promise to treasure you in sickness or in health and be thankful to the Father for every moment he gives us together. I will love and cherish you, and may I add, I will respect you as the head of our home till death do us part. <clears throat> Those two vows that you make today are more meaningful because you understand from life what they mean, what the expression is. When Jesus was getting ready to leave this earth, he did an act for his disciples. His disciples had um, actually been often unruly. At one time, Peter, who seemed to be the most boisterous always, had told him, don't talk about death and dying. Don't talk about leaving this world. You, no one's going to kill you. Don't talk about death. And the Lord said, get behind me, Satan. Again at the time when Jesus was getting ready to leave the world, and he had had a last meal with his disciples, he took a towel, and he took a basin, and he knelt before his disciples, and he washed their feet. Peter again said, don't wash me. Don't do that. Let me serve you. Washing feet is a very important thing to you too. And it probably is an expression that most of these folks don't understand being a part of your ceremony. So there is a basin, a towel, share with each other, washing feet. Like water from my heart, I pour my love on you. Your praise is like perfume, I lavish mine on you, till every drop is gone. I pour my
pour my love on you with praises like perfume I lavish mine on you till every drop is gone I pour my I uh, got extremely selfish, uh, very arrogant, and I turned away from Christ. <clears throat> and I stepped out on Carrie, and I left her and Michaela, and uh, divorced Carrie, and I remarried somebody else. And I was, <clears throat> again, I was, I was very selfish. I was in a very dark place. And I didn't know exactly how many relationships, how many friendships, and uh, how many people that I affected from doing this. And I, um, I finally got down on my knees and said, God, I, I made a huge mistake. Um, can you help me out? I had went into this marriage thinking I was too far gone, that I had messed up so much that there's no way that I could get back. And so I, I went ahead with the marriage, but I, when I got into it, I was like, God, I've, I've really messed up. You know, can you, can you help me out? And so he, he got me out of that. I moved to Florida with my parents and they loved on me and took care of me and gave me counsel and and um, the more that I continued to put Christ first and the more that I called on him, the more that I wanted my family back. And so Carrie and I started talking. We started texting and, and uh, I would come up here and she would go down there and, and we <clears throat> started working things out. And, and God has brought us together. There's still things that we have to work on, but God's going to take us through it. And I guess I'm here to say that you're never so far gone that God can't bring you back. And I, I didn't, I, I guess I didn't realize that, but through this last year and a half, <clears throat> I've really came to understand God's mercy and God's grace in a way that I've never known before. So Carrie, I'm Sorry for, for what I did. And Michaela, I'm sorry for leaving you. And I'm, I'm sorry to a lot, of, a lot of my friends that uh, I hurt, to my mom and dad that I made them make some decisions that they probably didn't want to make. Randy and Rita, I'm sorry that I betrayed your trust. Um, but I'm so thankful that, that God is a God of second chance, second and third. And like the pastor said this morning, you know, I, I, I do lawn care right now and I'm on a mower eight hours a day. So I get a lot of time to think and pray. 
And I always think, man, why, why did I do this? Why did I, why did I say this? Why did I, why did I leave Carrie? Why did I do all this stuff? It, it hurt so many people. It hurt, it hurt me. And so I've, I've been ashamed for a long time. And like the pastor said this morning, you know, my, hopefully my shame will turn into fame. And I'm, that's what I'm believing. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for, for being with Carrie and Michaela the time that I've been gone and for showing her love. And thank you for, for showing me your love. This room is filled with all different kinds of people, people who don't know our story at all, and people who have been through the story with us. Um, I know this may have seemed strange for us to wash each, wash each other's feet, but that was part of our story. And from the day that Ryan left, my life became a process of doing things that God had called me to do that did not make sense. Um, and I know some of you, when I shared it with you, you looked at me like I had horns growing out of my head. Why would you do that? But the night that Ryan announced he was leaving, I crawled out into the living room and was just trying to breathe. And I did a very immature thing spiritually. I did the, I'm just going to open up the Bible and see where it falls. <laughs> and I, I don't recommend that, but I was that desperate that night. And uh, sure enough, it opened up to Ezekiel 37. Isn't that where you would think it would go? <laughs> and it was the Valley of Dry Bones. And I read it, waited for a voice from heaven, and was just totally disgusted with the fact that that didn't work. I closed the Bible, and I just sat in stunned silence for hours. It wasn't until weeks later that I realized that that was my word. <laughs> And I went back and read it again. And he was saying, I am going to take something that is dead and I'm going to resurrect it back to life. The process of my marriage dying, I thought was going to kill me. I had to let it die. And I kept thinking and begging and praying for God to do this before it died. I got the papers. I still kept praying. I was fasting. I was doing everything that I knew to do. And then I heard another marriage was coming, and I begged God to stop that. Some of you were on your knees with me, begging God to stop this second marriage, because I truly thought that once that came, that was the end. And um, it, you know, I, I even remember asking God at one point. I had a friend that said, "Just ask him. Ask him if this is going to happen." I remember I was in the shower, and I said, "God, are you going to stop this marriage?" And he said, "No." So I prayed and prayed up until that hour, and when it passed, I thought, okay, I'm done. I was in Orlando at the time, working at the General Assembly, and, uh, and I remember I still was wearing my wedding ring up until the day that Ryan remarried, and I know people thought I was crazy even then. There were many other things that God called me to do. Um, the foot washing, when Ryan came back to the house one day, God told me to wash his feet. And I thought, you know, God, you've seen what he's doing. You've seen the choices he's making. Why do I have to wash his feet? But I prayed, and I knew that that's what God had called me to do. And when I did, Ryan allowed me to, and it, but he didn't accept it. His heart was so hard, but there was something that freed me that day. Even though Ryan didn't receive it, God did something in me, and he began to show me that this is what he's called me to do, to do some crazy things. That, that week in Orlando, after the marriage, I thought, I'm done. This is it. I'm out. I thought God was going to release me. I took my wedding ring off. I laid it on the counter in the hotel, and that day I went to the bookstore to work. I got to the bookstore, and there was a silver band there, and God told me to buy it and put it back on. And I said, you know what, God, <laughs> I don't want to do that. He is married, and I'm divorced. I don't want to wear a wedding band. But I bought it, and I put it on. And it was that week when I was in Orlando that God sealed this in my heart. It didn't matter how long. It didn't matter how far he went. This is what God had called me to do. And I received word after word after word after word that God was going to do this. 
and I had to do so many things that didn't make sense to me at the time. But what God was teaching me, I don't want Ryan to stand up here and take all the blame. I will never <laughs> allow that to happen because I was to blame too. Anybody who's married knows that if you are saying it's all your spouse's fault, you're the one that's in trouble. And so immediately when Ryan left, people circled around me to cheer me on and to tell me that I was the one that was okay. And you know what? I enjoyed that for a couple of weeks. And then I ran 100 miles an hour into a brick wall <laughs> in the shape of a friend who sat me down and said, we need to talk because you need to stop worrying about what Ryan's doing and you need to get before the Lord and you need to make changes in your own life. And I spent <laughs> a horrible year of going through that process. I felt like I was on the potter's wheel, spinning and spinning, and he was mashing and shaping and reshaping me. And all the while, I would look at Ryan and I'd say, isn't he the one with the problems? Isn't he the one that's making all the mistakes? And God would say, no, we need to talk about you. And he always brought me back to me. And in that process, in those years, I was refined. And he said, you've got to be ready for when Ryan comes home. <laughs> You know, and uh, it was crazy, but again, a year or two later, God called me again to wash Ryan's feet. This time, he wasn't hard and he wasn't cold. He received it. And that's why tonight um, we wanted to share this with you. I don't know how Pastor's going to work it out, but I just told him this is part of our story. And this was a tremendous blessing for me to be able to wash my feet, the feet of my husband, once when he was hard and couldn't receive it. And again, when he was receptive, and Ryan is not the one who received the blessing. I was the one who received the blessing in being able to do that. So we wanted to open that up to you guys and allow you to do that with us. In just a few moments, I'll invite couples to come up and stand with us to make a recommitment of their own marriage on both sides of this altar on the front rows are towels, and there will be a picture a uh, basin of water and uh, we don't have enough uh, basins to everyone but we'll pour water over your companions feet you can wash their feet if you so choose tonight as you come back together the most important thing for you too was to express a wearing a ring you told us how God told you to wear the ring Tonight, you're going to replace that ring with a ring that your husband is going to give you. Do each of you have rings for this ceremony? Lord, I lift these rings up as a symbol that wherever they may wear them, it will be a reminder. A reminder that they are committed to this marriage. The ring is made of purest substance and may their marriage and their commitment to each other be of purest faith. It's made in the form of a circle, which is a symbol of eternity. And may the continuation, an unending continuation of the ring be an unending commitment to their love for each other. And take the ring, place it on her finger, with this ring, I make my commitment to you for the rest of our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Carrie, okay, place the ring on his finger. Repeat after me. With this ring, I make a commitment to our marriage for the rest of our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask couples that have their companion here tonight to come and stand in the altar as we recommit our vows to our marriage as well. Would you please come and stand? You say, well, I don't feel awkward about that. Don't feel awkward. We're making a statement to the enemy of our marriage. You say, well, I, this could never happen to me. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say never. You could say as you're coming, this is awful foolish because... I mean, when they made this kind of commitment. Well, have you ever read the book of Hosea? 
When God kept telling the prophet to go back again and again and to bring his wife home and she kept leaving over and over again for someone else, over and over again, what sounds foolish to us, it's a very sacred, sacred moment in this time together. So as we come, sweetheart, I don't know where you are, but if you can work your way through here, you can come and stand with me. Come here, pretty lady. Come over here. Marriage is the oldest institution in the world. Predates even the church and the temple. Marriage is formed by God while humankind was in a state of innocence. Humankind fell, but marriage did not. It was and still is God's plan for a man and a woman. Gentlemen, men, women, if you'll face each other, will you now Pledge yourself to continue to love each other with a love that fails not. To watch over each other in sickness and in health. To protect and to comfort and encourage each other in all the trials of life. And to remain faithful to each other so long as you both shall live. You may express to each other at this time, I will. Men, as you look into your wife's eyes, I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me. I rejoicefully acknowledge you as my wife and renew my commitment to you that I express in our wedding vows many years ago I pledge to you my love and devotion for whatever time God permits us to live no one but Jesus shall come before you in my life I promise to be the spiritual leader of our home making Jesus and his church the center of our home. I will be faithful to you and to my Lord and will strive to be worthy of your respect and honor. Wife, if it is your desire to express that pledge back to your husband, continue holding hands and repeat after me. I joyfully acknowledge you as my husband and renew my commitment to you that I expressed in our wedding vows many years ago. I pledge to you my love and devotion for whatever time God permits us to live. No one but Jesus shall come before you in my life. I will look to you as the spiritual leader of our home and will joyfully submit to your leadership. I will trust you to give spiritual guidance to me and our family. Father, I pray for every couple that stands in this church tonight along with Ryan and Carrie. We have made a commitment. We have taken a stand. We have renewed a commitment. To God be the glory for the home that you have provided for us and the marriage that you've given us. We confess that 
There are often times that we've needed to wash each other's feet. Today, it may be a good opportunity for us to express that. Lord, in each and every way, we now commit to you to work on our marriage, to love each other, to serve you, and to place you first. And that once we get our love right about you, then our love for each other will come natural. I pray, dear Lord, that you would bless this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and what God hath joined together. No man, no thing, no demon of hell has the right to break. Amen and amen. Men, you may kiss your bride. Yeah, for the very first time. No, for the second time. <laughs> I introduce to you. Would you give them a round of applause? Appreciation. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are one in the Lord. Just stay where you guys are for a moment. Sing it, girl. Now may you see. Now may your spirit be our guide. 